Lou Vincent, let's start with this. Your reaction today, your mindset today, is it one of relief? There's an element of relief. It's It's been a, an interesting journey. I think we can look back to where it started back in 2008 and to have a secret that has been uh, suppressed and kept quiet for so long now to be able to finally speak out and tell the truth and share my experiences and my journey. It's quite liberating to be able to be that honest, pure bloke that I've always thought I was, but now I'm hitting it face on, I'm putting my hand up, I'm owning up to my mistakes because I know the difference between right and wrong, and I certainly did a lot of wrong things, and I'm hoping this is the start of a new chapter in life once this is put to bed. It's a powerful statement. My name is Lou Vincent, and I am a cheat. Yeah. Is that how you feel? Oh, completely. Completely. And, and the word cheat is such a disgusting word, and it uh, resembles uh, a characteristic some people we don't like. And I can certainly look back at the person I was, and I completely hated myself, and that probably, that's probably what kept me in the dark for so long. And now I'm liberated, and now I understand what my life is about and what I want to be um, seen as and it's taken a while to to get there but it comes down to just love I love life did you need to get this dark cloud out of your life oh, I couldn't continue on anymore holding on to this, uh, this this nasty world that I got entangled in so why come clean um, because you didn't have to no, no, absolutely. I could and I, I want you to clarify that. You did not have to tell the authorities anything, did you? We have, all of us have the right to silence. And yes, there were rumours about me. Um, there were statements already in the hands of the, the cricketing boards of, of some of the, the things I'd done. Um, but we all know that you need pretty heavy proof and evidence to be able to um, push forward with a... With, with a you know, to be find, found guilty of something. So, yes, I could have kept quiet, but, yeah, I would have lived the rest of my life with, you know, looking behind me going, when's that phone call going to come again? And am I going to be pestered again by the authorities? And Well, when they knocked on your door or phoned you or emailed you, the anti-corruption unit and also the Met Police, did you sit back and think, I actually don't need to say anything here? I don't need to open up to them? Well, originally that's how it was when we were overseas and Susie, um, I'd promised her a good life in New Zealand. She'd... Um, said goodbye to her family and her uh, her job, her house, and I said, "Come with me to New Zealand." She understood the dark secret I had, and we were still in transition of moving here when the the first email came from the ECB saying we need to talk. What was your initial reaction when you got that email? Um, I I knew I was expecting at some point to have, uh, you know some engagement through an authority because the statements have been said about me. So I was expecting phone calls, but in my mind, I'd retired from cricket. Uh, I loved the game, but it became a nightmare at times and I wanted to get away from it. I retired, got sick of it and wanted to move on with life, which I tried to do. Um, but I couldn't, I just couldn't. I couldn't handle this, this, this person I'd become. So you had to open up? Uh, I, I needed to. And the first person I really uh, opened my heart and my closet to was, you know, my Susie. And to have someone where you can have that uttermost faith, the faith and trust to be able to share some pretty horrible secrets and to have straight away their support um, and forgiveness, it really gave me the strength and the courage to go, right, now I need to approach my family and explain to them what their son and what their brother has been up to in the last six years. And all of a sudden it was this, this, this love, the support around me just gave me the strength to be able to make that phone call to um, firstly the Players Association to say I had a, I've got an issue and, and then after meeting them they put me in the right direction, you know, finding a lawyer and then obviously contacting the ACSU and, and booking in an appointment to to speak to speak with them. You must have been petrified, were you, about the potential of what could play out? Because let's be honest, Lou, you yeah. were facing criminal charges. 
Absolutely. Potential jail time. Absolutely. Yep. I knew all this was a consequence of my actions and those are the consequences that people should have when they do wrong. There, there, are, there, there has to be punishment. There has to be, for something that has, is so disgusting in, in a sport, in a sport we all love, it, it's a hobby, and for it to be tainted with corruption, it's a horrendous crime for, for not only the public but for the future of the game. Kids looking at their role models on TV, it, it affects such a broad range of people. Um, well, you've this. damaged the sport in this country, haven't you? Yes, I have, and it's 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 a, it's something I'll have to live with for the rest of my life. But I also know that by putting my hand up and and speaking the truth and being honest about my journey, uh, it will be an eye-opening, I guess, experience for people to actually understand what what goes on out there. The punishment you've been banned for life. I actually sit back and think that is a good result for you, if that makes sense. Um. Yeah, I mean you've yeah. retired, Lou. You're not yeah. going to go to jail. I mean that yeah. is a good result. Oh, it is. But when you've played a game for for 31 years that you've you've been, you know, you're born to play, and of course there's always ups and downs in anyone's career. And perhaps I'd never had the tools to be able to deal with them. But fast forward the clock, and I don't know, 20 years time or 30 years time, when my kids have grandchildren, and they have young kids that want to play cricket and I can't take them to a Black Cats game in 30 years time. You can never go to a game of cricket again, can you? No, I can't coach. I can't offer my skills as a as a, as a sportsman, as a cricketer. I, I, that's it. It's I've got to completely sever the past and use the lessons I've learnt through my journey with cricket to then hopefully be able to put forward to the next phase of my life. But in the end of it, given what you did, I say again, it is a yeah. good result for you. Uh, yeah, listen... I've spent a year trying to stay out of jail. Uh, I've worked really hard with my legal team. Um, you know, I've promised this gorgeous woman a lovely life in New Zealand for me to be extradited back to the UK, and it affects so many things. And yeah, I, in that regards, yeah, it's 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 a good result. Um, it's a sad result, uh, but it's life, and we've it's all got. We've and all it's got a fair result, wrong. though, isn't it? It's it's fair. Yeah. You say you've been fighting for the last year to stay out of jail. Now, one of the accusations or allegations against you that you've taken some sort of plea deal, have mm. you, did you, with the Met Police to keep you out of jail? Oh, completely not. I've approached the AC ACSU. I said, right, it's time for me to bear all. And when I sat down and obviously spent days and days going through all the details of, of everything of my life, I, I don't. I didn't know what the knock-on effects were going to be. Of course, there are going to be complaints to the police. But of course, this is players have gone to jail for this, especially in the UK. I've got no idea what I'm getting myself into. But as a human being, although I'm putting myself out there to be perhaps locked up, as a human being, I, I felt completely and utterly free for the first time in a long time. Were you prepared for the worst-case scenario, i.e., jail time? Were you mentally ready for that? Yep, absolutely. Would you have survived that? And I mean that honestly. Would you have survived going to jail? It's a horrible place and nobody ever, ever wants to um, go to prison. You know, what role model is that for your, your own children? When were you first given the word by the authorities that you wouldn't be facing more charges in terms of criminal charges? Because that must have been an enormous relief. I'd like you're saying, it's, it's never guaranteed. Like, I still don't know what potentially my fate will be. Um, all I know is that I've cooperated uh, fully and that's all I can do. And I know I had a caller a number of weeks ago, which you heard on one of my nighttime shows, and he rang up and he said, look, I just want to say that Lou Vincent is mm. courageous. And I've been asking a lot of people, what do you guys make of Lou? And, you know, people even at this work have said to me, they think you are courageous for coming forward. Are you? Oh, you definitely need to be courageous to hit this face on. It's a huge thing, you know, and to be sitting at home and seeing these leaks pop out over December, January and stuff and seeing my my personal, personal issues printed in the press when there's been so much trust put into the confidentiality of this was was almost a it's unbelievable really. It was it was it was like what on earth what on earth am I doing?
there's been times, but I well, feel... Well, you must have regretted in some ways, because as you said, you've cooperated, you didn't yeah. need to, yet all of that then becomes public fodder long mm. before the investigation is complete. Yeah, I mean, we, all, we all accept that that's a disappointing part of it. But as this case has evolved, unfortunately, the numbers of people that are, are called in to not only, you know, collaborate my statement, you're talking tens, hundreds of people, and as it grows, it's, it's eventually going to pop out at points. Lou, the other aspect to this is you've outed some pretty powerful individuals. I'm imagining mm -hmm. what you've said in your statement of facts. You're talking bookies here, you're talking the underworld. Mm -hmm. These are some scary individuals. Oh, it's, it's, it's a mafia. It's an underground. It's, it's everywhere in society. There's always a black market everywhere in society. And, you know, I never really got to meet the big bosses. You know, the, the, the bookies I dealt with were, you know, like an agent. And, you know, they're, they're very secretive. They're very protective of who they work for. They're very protective about other players that are on their books. They'll never uh, openly indulge um, other players because they've got to be seen to be protecting me and earning that trust But are me. you worried about your own safety, the safety of your family, the safety of Susie here? Because as I say, you are the first major cricketing whistleblower. You mm. are. You have named mm. names here, and I imagine they won't be happy about that. Oh, of course not. But they've also got to accept the fact that as I have, we've, we've fallen into a trap and we've, we've made a terrible mistake. And good people make mistakes. Have you had to, and have the ICC or the Anti-Corruption Unit, have the Met Police, have anyone looked at your own security, even back here, your own safety in New Zealand? Has that been addressed? Uh, well, listen, you know... You know what I mean by yeah. that? Because, I mean, yeah. you live on a property at Cow Cop. I mean, your <laughs> property now has become media fodder. Everyone mm. knows where you live here. I just mm. wonder, in those quiet moments, do you worry about that? Do you worry that, you know, you could be at risk here? Because we know there have been stories, Lou, in the past, and I don't mean mm. to be worst-case scenario here, but it must have crossed your mind. Yeah, all, all I can say is we've got, we, we've got things covered. Uh, in, in a, in a, we've got a system in place. We've got things covered. Uh and without indulging all my secrets, we're, we're, we're going to be okay.